So today we're going to talk about the quick pediatrics Cupid and today's topic of discussion is let me write over here to save your time sub endocardial cardial cushion defect okay so here we're going to talk very briefly right so let's talk about this remember it's a asenotic heart defect it's a asenotic okay and it has a left to right shunt why there is a left to right shunt and why there is a no cyanosis because it's a left to right shunt this is a heart you know okay this is a heart and if there is a blood that is a, this is oxygenated blood and there's a dis deoxygenated blood over here means pure and the impure right so if it mixes with this and it gets again the pure gets oxygenated so nothing to worry before reaching the tissues or other parts of the body it will be oxygenated if it's right to left shunt then there is a mixing of the deoxygenated blood with the oxygenated one so it becomes impure and that causes a cyanosis and there are different diseases, defects that cause cyanotic heart diseases and all those diseases starts with a T. Okay guys, so let's talk about the subendocardial cushion defect. To call it as, this is nothing but I would like to tell you, it's a disease of four things. One is the ASD, VSD and the clefts in the mitral and the tricuspid walls. Means we're going to put a gap over here, put a gap over here, okay? And the cusp over here, and the cusp over here. Right, right? So this is, it's related to osteum primum ASD. This defect results from abnormal development of AV canal. Resulting in VSD. This is VSD. This is ASD, atrial septal defect, ventricular septal defect, okay? And the clefts in the mitral and the tricuspid walls. This is a tricuspid and this is a mitral, okay? So this is known as subendocardial cushion defect. In USMLE or MRCPCH examination, if you are asked about subendocardial cushion defect, the one thing that you should never ever forget, the association of this disease with Down syndrome. Down's syndrome. Very important. Trisomy 21. Okay? Right? Right. So 30% of the patients with this subendocardial cushion defect will have a trisomy 21. Okay? And the other frequent features in these patients, these patients can have a splenia. No spleen. This can be asked in examination. And Polysplenia syndrome. Okay, guys. So, what are the signs and symptoms? Okay, so you know very well these patients will have all these four complications ASD, VSD, and the clefts in the mitral and the tricuspid walls. So, you're gonna get holocystolic murmur from the VSD if it's a restrictive. Okay, and a systolic murmur from a tricuspid or what you call a mitral valve insufficiency right why because when this pumps or right ventricle or left ventricle goes under the contraction it pumps out the blood to the either the pulmonary artery and here the iota right but due to mitral wall insufficiency this will push this walls and causes a murmur and that is known as a systolic murmur right yes good now, and these patients are at risk of Isenmenger syndrome. What's Isenmenger syndrome? I'm going to make a different video on that and upload shortly. Okay, so remember these patients are at risk of Isenmenger syndrome. Okay, guys? Then, what's the treatment? Surgical correction is sometimes the only option okay that's it and some benefits from PA there's a pulmonary arch banding 
if shunting is predominantly at ventricular level and that's right so just for examination purpose remember the surgeries no need to remember the name of the surgery for examinations just remember the treatment option for this is gonna be surgery okay guys so thank you so much for watching this video take care